Welcome Seven in Alec Lasley from the Hoosier.com, the uh, associate publisher, senior writer. Uh, how's it going, man? It's going good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Uh, basketball around the corner. I know a lot of people are ready to get that underway. Uh, still questions about recruiting. Just had one. Um, oh, I should have marked it. But it was basically asking about you know, are you having missed on these last, the three big recruits that uh, visited? And, uh, of course, the last of which of those was Arrington Page, who committed to USC. Um, can't blame him. Beautiful out there. They're building their program up, too. Uh, I, they know that they're coming into the Big Ten, and they're not going to come in empty-handed. Uh, USC is and UCLA. They're, they're going to come swinging, I think. But – but getting back to the recruiting aspect on Indiana, my point, Alec, is that until they win, it doesn't matter. They, they're they're going to hit some, miss some, but they still haven't won. And this season is the season where that changes, or that can change. If they're competing or compete for the Big Ten Championship and they make noise in the NCAA tournament, then, then these kids will see, okay, this is not only is Indiana, this is all this stuff I've heard of, but now I can see them winning. Uh, and I think that has to happen before they're going to start landing multiple big time recruits. Yeah, it's tough because, you, you know, you, that, that's the, the one which came first, you know, the chicken or the egg. Do they get the players first? Or do they start winning first? Because obviously at some point you do need to win. Um, but in another sense, you still need to be able to get the players to put out the, the successful seasons and get the win. So, you know, it's a, it's it's something where Indiana is going to probably thrive off of the transfer portal this year and, and still probably next until you get to that that you know maybe deep into the 2024 and then 2025 class just because this staff really hasn't had a, a lot of time to kind of build those early relationships with the class of 2023. Uh, obviously, you're seeing that already with 2024 guys and then uh, Trent Sicily especially and Jalen Harrelson in the 25 class, but. Other than that, I mean, they, they were behind the eight ball, and I think you have to take a step back and look at uh, the success that they did have already, though, in the class of 2023, right? I mean, I think a lot of people forget about uh, Gabe Cups and Ja'Kai Newton, who are uh, both four-star guards, both extremely talented players at the high school level. They just don't play on a huge national uh, circuit, and uh, that's starting to change a little bit with, with Centerville and Gabe Cups. Um they're, they're starting to play a little bit more on the, the kind of national limelight with uh, some big time games last season and then this season as well upcoming. Um, but when you when you look at their class, right, I mean, they, they jumped off to such a strong start with uh, two early commitments basically before the season even really got started. And then they took a huge, obviously, step back with not being able to secure anything in the summer. And so a lot of people have recency bias with uh, not not being able to land any of those guys. Uh, at the end of the day, yes, they they definitely needed. Uh, I think the the one out of those those three or four were Arrington Page. Um, you definitely needed at least one of those. Obviously, we're not able to get that. So you know, you you go into uh, this season looking at now just the transfer portal, and that puts a lot of pressure on the staff. That puts a lot of pressure on uh, them trying to kind of make roster uh, roster movements at the end of the season. Uh, we know that's going to happen regardless, but um, it's you go into that knowing that you need to land someone uh, rather than, you know, some other programs just looking uh, in the transfer portal and, and kind of ha saying, hey, if we see someone that we'll like, you know, we'll, we'll take them. Indiana needs to land at least two guys from the transfer portal. And so that puts a lot of pressure on the staff to, to be able to actually secure something uh, in the springtime um, with a lot of decisions. It'll probably still be kind of up in the air. Um, it does help that you know, there, there may only be one or two NBA decisions from this group um, with potentially Jalen Hutchifino. And, you know, we'll see what happens with uh, Jordan Geronimo and, and Tamar Bates. Those seem to be the other two guys that, um, you know, seem to, to have the most potential NBA wise out of this group at this current, this current moment. Um, but when you look at the rest of the roster, right, you know, Xavier Johnson, Miller Cop, Race Thompson and Trace Jackson Davis, they're not coming back. So you know you have extra spots that you can fill. So that, that will be helpful. Uh, whereas last year, right, you were kind of waiting to see what Trace Jackson Davis was going to do before you went into that transfer portal and got someone. Um, and that, that kind of 
you know, had their hand tie, hands tied as well. So, you know, all in all, you know, I, I think that this, this class is going to be a good one. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in the transfer portal, but I think getting a big and then getting a guard is, is key and, and a necessity for Indiana in order to keep whatever momentum that they get this year moving forward. And you talk, you talk about the transfer portal. I mean, to, to me, I, there's, it's a 100% now a factor in everything. And I'm not trying to say it's not, but to me, there's also a level of you got to cross your fingers and your toes and hoping that the right players enter the transfer portal. So, uh, I mean, does that add to the pressure? Because this is it's it's not really something they can control, whereas on the recruiting trail, I don't want to say you can control it, but it feels like you have a little bit more control. You don't know who's going to enter the transfer portal at the end of the season. You could potentially have guys go, I guess, midway through the season and, and keep your eye and make contact early, but... Um, it's it's a mad rush and a mad dash there once the season ends. I know Indiana has had some success in the past, uh, obviously bringing in Xavier Johnson and, um, but I mean I, Miller Cobb from Northwestern. But I, I mean it's to me it's it's they don't have any other options. But it's kind of playing a dangerous game because you got to make sure that those right pieces get in there. You don't want to just bring somebody in just to bring somebody in. Yeah, and that, that's the thing, right? When you look at high school recruitments, you have four years almost to, mm -hmm. to build those relationships and, and to make sure that, you know, they're the, they're the right guys. And it's interesting. I heard, I believe it was Mike Bray, uh, obviously Notre Dame head coach talk about it the other day that he recruits and kind of digs into the kids that he's recruiting as much as he does as the parents. And, and so, you know, when you're, when you're trying to build a, a program, which Mike Woodson and the staff are, are trying to do um, that, that does uh, kind of bring up a, a huge, uh, kind of question mark because you have to make quick decisions and you have to move quickly in the portal uh, in order to obviously get these kids to commit to you. Uh, so that that's why, I mean, it, it's, I don't want to say it's kind of going in there blind because you, a lot of these guys do have obviously some sort of resume to follow them. Um, at least the, the players that Indiana would be going after, which are, you know, guys who probably only have one or two years left. Um, high impact players who can come in immediately, which is what they're going to need. So you, you at least have that resume behind them. Uh, then it's about just being able to connect uh, right away. And, and typically, you know, the, the best, uh, the best kind of commitments from the portal are, are short recruitments, ones where you, you pretty much know right away that, hey, this is, this is kind of the school that I'm interested in. They know that I'm interested in them and it's pretty easy to figure out. Uh, the ones that kind of drag on a little bit longer are the ones that, you know, are kind of iffy. You know, you looked at uh, Dexter Dennis, um, basically the, the loan option for Indiana last year ended up going to, I believe it was Texas A&M, uh, the, the kind of combo guard. That one had a lot of steam for Indiana right away, but because they were not able to uh, really pick or choose him uh, because of the, the decision that Trace Jackson Davis had to make, it kind of just put them, uh, you know, in the, in the back seat there. But, um, you know, these are recruitments that, that have to move fast. And so, you're going to hit on a lot, but you're also going to miss on a lot. And I think you, uh, not to say that Indiana really missed with, uh, you know, Parker Stewart and Michael Durr, but, you know, th those were two that, that probably uh, didn't fit exactly what Indiana was looking for um, skill-wise. And, and you, know, you got it with the other two. I think you'll, you'll see that this year, obviously, with Miller Kopp, but you, you got that last year with Xavier Johnson. So, um, you know, it's you're probably going to, in recruitments, you're going to miss way more than you're, you're actually going to make, but uh, it does put a lot of pressure to be able to to kind of make that immediate impact uh, in that transfer portal that, that Indiana is going to be looking for. Alan uh, comments that he just read the media watched a practice. First of all, that's not accurate, and says IU essentially has uh, two starting fives. I don't know where you read that, Alec. I mean, uh, Alan, but. Um, there is no media in the practice that I'm aware of. He's, has he's talking, he, it was, uh, I would be, was, I would be awfully upset um, if that was the it case. Was, no, it was, it was Dems from uh, big 10 network, I believe who was, who was there for, uh, for practice. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, it, but Trace Jackson Davis had, had made this comment as well, but I think personally that that's him being a good team member. Uh, I'm sure that that second, I, that second unit is definitely much, much stronger, but, Two starting five? No, I, I'm not going to say that that is the case because there's no way that you have a, a starting five that that could equal uh, Trace Race, Miller Cop, X, and Jalen Huchafino, which will undoubtedly be the starting lineup. Um, so, but that is important that the second unit is much stronger now. 
But that's the case only if Tamar Bates has made a big jump. Um, uh, or, or basically, all these guys, all these guys have to uh, make a big jump. Um, but that's the the secret to this team being successful or not. Although I think they're already going to be better just because of of Jalen Hood, Shafino being in there and playing with Xavier. I think they're going to be like two point guards. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I mean, I think realistically, does Indiana have uh, as good of a bench as there is and as deep as a, a skilled bench uh, as there is across the country? Probably. Um, but the, their starters are, you know, there, there's a reason why pretty much everyone knows what this starting five is already going to be like. You have a six year guy in Rice Thompson, uh, fourth year in, in Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, two uh, two grad transfers, obviously, and Xavier Johnson and Miller Cop, and then you bring in a five star freshman. I mean, that's that's pretty hard to uh, compete against uh, when you're talking about a a bench unit. So, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with the, the the statement that Indiana has two starting fives um, because one, the point that you mentioned there, there's still a lot of question marks on this bench, right? We don't know exactly you know what jump Tamar Bates is is going to make. We don't know what jump Jordan Geronimo is going to make. Um, I think that's that's more of the question mark in in my mind than than Tamar Bates um, because you do have the luxury to have depth and and skill in the backcourt now uh, with bringing in Jalen Hutchifino. That that kind of takes a little bit of the the pressure off of Tamar Bates playing heavy minutes. Uh, but you know where is Jordan Geronimo going to fit in this? in this lineup, um, you know, we, we, he, he mentioned a lot about wanting to play on the perimeter. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that uh, that point has kind of backed off a little bit. Um, so how is he going to fit? What specific role is he going to play on this team? Because now they have Malik Renault who can come in and play spot minutes a, as needed and, and be pretty effective in that. I mean, we've heard a lot throughout the summer and in early parts of the fall here, what he's doing in practice and just how good he will be right away and how good he will be down the line. So, you know, I think the, the big question on the bench is, is what, what Jordan Geronimo can do, what role he will play. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of fill in the, the pieces after that. But um, this starting five is, is a starting five for a reason. I don't think there's, there's going to be any change throughout the season with that. And then Jalen Hutchifino just kind of, uh, I, I think, brings a, an extra dimension that we've talked about ever since he committed to this program. Uh, to, to this Indiana team. A uh, big important visit coming up, though, from Asa Newell, a class of 2024 five-star prospect and another Montverde Academy forward. Speaking of Montverde, I think I, I retweeted this yesterday, but Montverde Academy has probably more players in the NBA than maybe any college um, currently. They have 13 players in the NBA right now. Is that stunning or what? Yeah, and again, you, uh, I think we talked a little bit about this too, but when you look at their, their most recent guys, which are you know, pretty much their, their standouts, uh, a lot of those were on the same roster for two or but three six years. Six of it? Was it six, you said? Yeah, it was five or six, yeah. I mean, you look at Kate Cunningham, obviously between – uh, their sophomores and junior years, right? Some players obviously had, you know, bigger impacts throughout the years um, and, and how long they were there. But Kate Cunningham, uh, Daron Sharp, j- just some of them, the most recent ones. But then you go back to D'Angelo Russell, Ben Simmons, I believe were on the, the same roster at one point. Um, they they stack their, their rosters from from basically sophomore to senior year. And they, they always bring in new kids. Just just with the, the same thing that happened this offseason, they, they lost a lot from this past year's uh, national championship team. Um, they they go out and they bring in uh, pretty much five or six five star top top ten top fifteen type players uh, in in the 24, uh, 25 classes as well. I believe they brought in another twenty twenty three five star as well. So they they reload. Um, they they obviously uh, can continue to do this year in and year out, and that's why. Uh, you know, getting one of those kids to commit to your program uh, as a college is is so essential in building some sort of pipeline. Whether or not you get it every single year, uh, talking about Indiana here, it, it just builds that trust with the coaching staff down down there that they know, hey, as long as you take care of this kid, we're going to keep you know pushing kids to to visit there. We're going to keep having you guys in for 
for all of our practices and games. And, um, you know, let's be honest, if you have that relationship on your side, it doesn't matter if you miss on almost every other target that you have. If you get two Monroe kids coming in every single year. Hey, you get Asa Newell good. and Liam McNeely. No one's going to be thinking about Arrington Page or anybody else. Um, and again, because they, the guys that come from there are talented. And hence, by the thirteen guys in the NBA. Well, but, and they're they're ready. They're ready. They're mentally and physically. They're ready. ready they're ready to play count. right now. Yeah. And that's a, that's the thing about Jalen Huchifino. He is. Uh, that's a, a big reason why this team is going to be a lot better is because he is just mentally forward uh, ahead of a lot of players. He just has to learn the IU system, learn Mike Woodson's system, learn the defense and all that, which I, I, I think that is something he'll pick up easily. But um, Asa Newell coming in, how important is that visit? Yeah, extremely. He, he's already been on campus for an unofficial visit uh, earlier this summer, kind of late spring, where he received the, uh, the official offer um, from Indiana. But Indiana has been up there for a while uh, in terms of kind of programs at the – at the kind of main main part and main group of, of his recruitment, still kind of getting going. Uh, he visited Georgia uh, a few weeks ago, where his brother is a walk on on the basketball team. Um, so, you know, Georgia. Don't think you have to worry about Georgia. Well, I, I think I think Georgia is definitely you know one to to watch here. Obviously, with Mike White kind of starting yeah. to to build something there, we'll we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. But but again, when you you know, w- with talking to Asa and, and his dad, they've been very open about we want to see what happens with, with Jalen and Malik. Obviously, they didn't play together um, last year with this as being Asa's first year uh, down at, at Monverde. But uh, when you look at that that duo and how, and how important this year is for Indiana in developing them, right? If you potentially have a one-and-done Jalen Hutchifino and you have a Malik Renault who comes in and, you know, even if he plays 15, 16 minutes a game right off the bench uh, and is in, in store to start as a sophomore um, coming off of a potential, you know, Big Ten, uh, Big Ten, uh, you know, leader, that that's significant. Right. And and you look at what they're losing uh, in the next couple of years, Indiana, that is. And, and that just makes this move in this transition uh, that much more uh, easy for for someone like Asa Newell. But. Um, you know, it, it's it's a key visit. Um, you know, I, I think the the noise around Derek Queen is kind of settled down. He's visiting Maryland this weekend. I um, Indiana is still going to be involved until the end there, but it's buddy it's Maryland not, is I, going to be a team to be reckoned with probably by next year. Yeah, and, and the the thing is, with, with the, the job that Kevin Willard's done there, obviously they they seem to have gone head to head with with Indiana in almost every single recruitment that Indiana has been involved in at the moment. Um, but that the, the Asa Newell uh, one is, is significant. One, Maryland's not really going to be involved in that one, but uh, you, you do, you do need that type of skill set, And he brings that type of skill set that, uh, that Mike Woodson's going for. And now to have an extra year of seeing what he's going to do with race Thompson and trace Jackson Davis, um, even Malik Renault, I, I think is going to be going to be significant for him. Um, but being able to, to see a little bit more of this Mike Woodson, uh, system and scheme um, is going to be important as well.